So we'll go ahead and um, get started here soon. Um, yeah, another power hour coming at you here um, from my back porch. It's nice and rainy outside. Um, in my opinion, a yoga practice kind of always adds a, um, a little something when it's raining outside and you can practice under cover. So happy to share this one with you. Um, and if you're um, just joining us, it's either child's pose or that seated sukhasana to start practice, right? So sukhasana, easy pose, right? Cross-legged seated position at the top of your mat, or you're in child's pose with the knees out wide, the arms outstretched on the mat, and the forehead resting on the earth, right? But whichever pose you've chosen, just take a few moments to get settled, right? Maybe pulling the heart through the arms a little bit. If you're in child's pose, maybe tenting up onto the fingers and kind of shifting your shoulders side to side. All right, but just take a few moments to kind of shake out the cobwebs, open up the chest, and be round in the spine a few times. And then once you feel settled, whether it's in child's pose or in that cross-legged seated position, all right, see if you can't take a minute just to pause and observe. All right, so you're not trying to manage your breath. You're not trying to change your thoughts. All we're trying to do here is check in to find a foundation for your practice by identifying what is. Right, not what you want to be happening today, not what you wish was happening earlier. Just allowing yourself to truly, with eyes wide open, even though they're shut, Note whatever's going on on the map for you right now. Right, outside of judgment, outside of good or bad, right or wrong. Just identifying what's showing up. And then from that quick place of just stopping and observing, we'll switch our awareness to the breath. Noticing how that attention shift to your breath might change the quality of your breath right off the bat. Maybe it starts to deepen it or expand it. All right, but we'll keep the lips gently closed. We'll make sure that the chin is tucked under the crown of the head, that the spine is long. All right, and if you're in child's pose, maybe you wanna fan the fingers out and push the hips over the heels, and then kind of rock the forehead side to side to bring more length into the spine. But over the next five to eight rounds of breath, can you 
start to build the deepest breath you can, right? Massive inhales, feeling everything expand away from the spine. And then complete exhales, really pulling the belly button back towards the spine. And most of the time we keep that air trapped up in our lungs, but here, as we build this rhythm for the practice, can you send your breath not only deep down into your belly using your diaphragm, diaphragm to draw breath in and out, but can you breathe into the back of the shoulders? Can you breathe into the hips, the soles of the feet, the fingertips, right? Can you breathe into the whole body? Almost as though it was hollow. And a few more breaths here, just to observe the speed of your respiration. Let's take one more big breath in together. And then a big full breath out. Slowly blinking the eyes open. All right, and then from there, finding tabletop pose. So maybe crossing the ankles under you, or maybe just rolling the spine up if you were in child's pose. All right, as always, we're gonna fan those fingers out, drive thumb, index, middle finger, knuckle down. All right, you can lift your pinky fingers off the mat, and then hug the forearms in together. All right, and then from there, on your next inhale, drop the belly as you look up and find that first cow pose. Awesome, and then press arching around it into your first cat pose. Very nice, on your inhale, drop the belly, look up, find cow. And then on your exhale, press arch and ground it into cat. And then you get the picture. We're taking cats and cows here. We're not rushing that movement. We're paying that purposeful attention to inhale and exhale. Feeling the belly drop down as you look up in cow. And then feeling the spine arch as you press down and up in cat. Right, and then just play with those opposing forces, right? Lengthening and strengthening. Right, rounding and dropping and flexing. Inhaling and exhaling. All right, and as always, a lot of you Orlando Power Yoga students that are following along or will follow along, you can move in whichever way you want to here, right? So if you want to move with some intuition that allows you to move more side to side, right? Some of you like to kind of trace a barrel with your ribs one way than the other, right? As far as I'm concerned, no wrong way to move here, just as long as it's in choreography with your breath. Awesome. Slowly coming back to a tabletop pose. If you want to take one or two more rounds, it's up to you. And then we'll eventually find downward facing dog. First one of the day. All right, so first one of the day means you're bending knees side to side. All right, and you're just kind of checking in with your first down dog. Scanning the body from the hands all the way to the soles of the feet. Again, noting and identifying anything you might physically be bringing to the mat here today. Perfect. All right, and then what we'll do is we'll walk the feet, mats with distance. Take the right hand, reach under the body, and start to pull the chest in between the arm and the left leg, moving the right elbow towards the right side of the mat, and then keeping that whole left palm pressing into the earth. Very nice, and then gently switch, right hand down, left arm reaches under the body, pulling now the left elbow to the left side of the mat, right, and really making sure that the triad of that right palm stays rooted into the earth. Breathing here for three, two, one. Very nice. Bring the toes together, right? Back into downward facing dog. Inhale high onto the balls of the feet. And then from here, let's drop the heels towards the right. Think about dragging that left palm towards the back of the mat. And then set your gaze in and up towards that left armpit, right? Lengthening the neck and really breathing into that left lap. Awesome. Bring those heels back towards center and let's drop it to the opposite side. Pushing that right uh, armpit down to square off the chest, right? Looking in and up, bringing that nice side body opening to the right side of the body. And slowly come back towards center, right? From here, inhale high onto the balls of the feet, and then we'll slowly tiptoe it up, and we'll eventually find that first ragdoll pose. All right, so as you walk the feet hips width distance apart, grab opposite elbow. Right, or the arms can dangle, but I like opposite elbows grabbing so I can sway side to side. All right, with every exhale here in Ragdoll, letting go of any physical tension you might be carrying. 
right? But even more importantly, at least for my practice here, it's this opportunity to let go of expectation, to give myself the permission to be on my mat and only on my mat for the next hour, to let go of any to-do list or agenda that I have for the day. I had to truly just to listen to that dialogue between body and mind for about 50, 55 minutes from now. All right, from here, let's take one more big breath in, and then a big breath out. Hands lower down to the mat. We'll gently toe heel the feet together so the big toes are touching, and there's about a one or two inch gap between the heels. From there, bring a pretty bouncy bend to the knees. The arms are heavy. And then slowly stack vertebra over vertebra over vertebra. And then eventually drawing the shoulder blades back. Inhale, reaching up and finding Tadasana pose. All right, so in Tadasana pose, I might be reaching a little bit out of the screen's perspective. But we're going to relax the shoulders from the ears. We're going to tuck the pelvis under the hips. That's that neutral pelvis you're going to hear me talk about a lot. We're not going to grip the mat with the toes, right? We're going to lift up all ten toes and then gently restretch the toes back onto the earth. From there, we'll look up in between the palms. Maybe you bring that soft smile to the face as you do so. And then with that soft smile on the face, lower your hands down to heart center on your exhale. Right, and see if you can't from that kindness, from that compassion you stoked with that soft smile, see if you can't find an intention from that foundation. Right, so an intention for your practice is just moving your practice towards something. Right, having the discipline to choose a lighthouse for your flow that you can course correct to over the next hour. All right, so whatever is useful for you, whatever that intention is, from that place, take a big breath in, and then a full breath out. Inhale, reach the arms up, Tadasana. And then first slow swan dive forward, soft bend in the knees. Inhale to a halfway lift. Very nice, and then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Very nice. Exhale, forward fold. All right, so inhale, halfway lift, all right, demonstrating the fingertips on the shins like a lot of you like to do, all right? But if the fingertips are on the shins, that's fine, but still, tuck the pelvis forward. I prefer those airplane arms because it really keeps my side body honest, right, and my core long and lengthy. All right, so holding whichever halfway lift you've chosen for three, two, one, lower the hands down into the mat. Step it back into your high plank pose or your first high push-up. Right, so your first high plank or high push-up, your spine is just like it was in Tadasana when you were standing. Right, so the crown of the head's moving towards the front of the mat. The heels are moving towards the back of the mat. The quadriceps are engaged as the kneecaps lift up towards the hips and the forearms draw in towards one another just like cat pose. Very nice, and then from here, exhale, lower down, chaturanga, hold. Make sure that your elbows and your shoulders are in line. The elbows and the shoulders, right, stay parallel in chaturanga. Back into your high plank pose. Lower down chaturanga. Exhale, inhale, back into your high plank. Right, exhale, lower down chaturanga. Back into high plank. Lower down chaturanga. Hold for three, two, upward facing dog. First one here, right? So roll onto the tops of the feet, press the hands down. Draw the shoulder blades together behind you. All right, maybe you set your gaze up high towards your brows as you take a huge breath in. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Tops of the feet start that movement, pressing the palms down into the earth through that whole transition. Awesome. From here, inhale high onto the balls of your feet. Bend your knees, then step or float as you find the top of your mat. Halfway lift once you arrive. And then exhale, hands lower down. Root down, rise up, land in Tadasana pose, and then exhale forward fold. Awesome. Inhale to a halfway lift, and then exhale, hands lower down into the mat. Step back, high plank. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale into upward facing dog. Exhale into downward facing dog. Inhale high onto the balls of your feet. Bend your knees, step or float, halfway lift, and then exhale forward fold. Reverse swan dive up, land in Tadasana. Start to build some momentum here. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift. And then hands lower down. If you want to step or hop through that vinyasa, you can hop back to belly. Inhale, bend elbows. Inhale into up dog. And then exhale into downward facing dog. Right, inhale high, knees bend, step or float. Halfway lift at the top of your mat. No hurry. Exhale, forward fold. Root to rise. Tadasana is where you land. One more sun. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to a halfway lift. 
And then the hands lower down. And you're moving through, choosing your vinyasa, right? Or as always, skipping your vinyasas all together. If you just want to step back, back into down dog when I call them out, step back to down dog, right? And if you want to add on, keep your chaturangas, more of them, chin stands, make it yours. Inhale high, knees bend, step float, halfway lift, top of the mat. And then exhale forward. Inhale, rise up, mountain pose. Right, and then from mountain pose, palms press together overhead. Relax the shoulders from the ears. Draw the pelvis forward and maintain that. And then find that first katasana, your practice, that first chair pose. All right, so in chair pose, I think it's pretty important to keep the sides of the neck long, right? You don't want to look up towards your hands, right? That kind of pinches off your airway. See if you can't look down towards that front edge of your mat, right? Seeing all ten toes at the bottom of that peripheral vision, right? And then sink even lower. Very nice. Sink even lower. And then drop your arms to your side. Float your belly right above your thighs. With every exhale, pull the belly button up towards the spine. Holding here for three, two. Fingertips scrape the mat back to Utkatasana. Very nice. Holding here for another four. Three, two. Exhale forward, fold. Very nice. Halfway lift on your inhale, long flat back. And then exhale, hands down, elbows stay close to the body as you choose that vinyasa that you need to get to that destination of downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg to the sky. And then from there, exhale, right knee to left elbow across the body. Inhale, heel to the sky. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, heel to sky. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Touch, tap, shoulders over wrists. Inhale, heel back to the sky. And then bend the knee and open the hip. Pushing the heart towards that left big toe. Right, and notice how you kind of want to shrug your shoulders up towards your ears here. Can you press energy down through the hands, keeping the triads of the palms connected as you open up that left hip towards the left side of the mat, squaring off the chest, breathing deep into this twisted dog. First one here. And right, some of you like more dynamic movements here. You want to circle around in the leg, right? By all means, listen to your intuition. Very nice. From there, lower that right leg down. Inhale, left leg to the sky. And then bring your left knee to your right elbow across the body. Inhale it up. And then exhale, knee to nose or knee to forehead. Inhale it up. And then from there, exhale, left knee, left elbow. Hold there, connect. And then inhale it up. Very nice. Knee bends, hip open. Same opportunity for this first twisted dog on the left side. You have to kind of feel out the inseam of the right leg. Right, to raise up that left knee from the glute, and then the square off the chest, and make sure you're strong and stable through the hands. Breathe. Slowly re-extend that left leg back to the sky. Big toe lowers down, then you big toe. Refan the fingers out, rolling inner shoulder to outer shoulder. Inhale high onto the balls of your feet. Bend your knees, step or float. Chair pose is where you land. Fingertips scrape, hips low. Heart higher than the hips. Inner thighs hug in. Very nice, right? Feel that pelvic floor turn on, right? So if the elbow or if the knees are moving away from one another, hard to find stability. If you're hugging those knees in together, right? Much easier to find that stability. All right, breathing here for three, two. Stand up, arms by your side. Draw your shoulder blades back. Spin one breath here in true north pose. And then reanimate the arms up, find Tadasana. And then big reverse swan dive back into your forward fold. From there, step your right leg back into a long runner's lunge. All right, so spin it about three breaths here in this first runner's lunge, making sure that that left ankle's under the left knee, making sure that the left uh, heel is dragging back in space, and the right toes are dragging forward in space. Just like we were in that first Utkatasana, the inner thighs, right? Hug them in. Right, allow that to be a strong foundation for your runner's lunge. Take a big inhale, and then step back into down dog as the hands drive down, the hips pipe up. Roll yourself into a high plank pose, and then lower down knees, chest and chin. On your inhale, find cobra. Very nice, and then on your exhale, find downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg to the sky, and then step it into a long runner's lunge. 
Same thing here, right heel back, left toes forward, inner thighs in. From that foundation, your torso can lift up with levity, with lightness. Big breath in, step up top of the mat, forward fold. Arms reach out in front of you, rise up to your back bend, and then lower hands down to heart center. Beautiful, inhale, reach up, back bend, and then exhale, forward fold. Step your left leg back into a long runner's lunge. Your body's right where it just, just was. All right, inhale. This time, set your gaze high towards your brows for a moment. And then exhale. Set your gaze or your drishti in between your shins. Roll yourself into a high plank pose. Lower down knees, chest, and chin. On your inhale, find cobra. Awesome. And then on your exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg to the sky. And then step it into a long runner's lunge. I right, take a big, huge inhale, and then step up top of the mat. Big toe meets big toe. Arms reach out in front of you, rise up, huge back bend, and then lower hands down to heart center. Very nice. From there, reverse swan dive it up, Tadasana, arms shoulder width distance apart, and then exhale, swan dive it forward. From there, fingertips scrape the mat back to Katasana, holding this chair pose here. Breathe. Right back to that intention, right back to that lighthouse for your practice, right? Like, why'd you show up, right? And then from that motivation, we'll slowly lower everything down. Once the hips tap, Navasana boat pose, right? So extend through the legs if you can maintain, right, the heart dragging forward. But if extending through the legs means you're rounding, I'd much rather your knees be bent, right, so you can maintain that length and strength through your spine. All right, so whichever pose you're choosing, from high boat, take a big breath in, and then Ardha Navasana, low boat pose. Lower back presses down, forehead presses towards the ceiling, fingertips reach towards the front of the mat. From there, swim, kick the legs for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Crisscross the ankles, 10, 9, 8, 7. Six, forehead still presses up towards the ceiling. Fingertips still reaching towards the front of the mat. Three, two, one. Heel click them slowly. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hug your knees into your chest. Low back presses into the earth. Maybe you give your legs a little butterfly in towards one another and then pull them in the opposite direction right, and then what we'll do is we'll rock back and forth right giving ourselves a little massage from the heels to the shoulders gaining enough momentum to eventually rock into a chair pose or maybe you move your hands to get yourself there right but chair pose is where we'll land from chair pose take another big breath in and then find some relief with that forward fold very nice halfway lift and then lower the hands down into the mat. Step or float through that vinyasa. And I peeling into a huge up dog, maybe holding it for another breath. And then exhaling into downward facing dog. And I from there, inhale right leg to the sky. And then step it into your first warrior pose, that warrior one. Spinning that left heel down. As you reach the arms up. All right, embodying that strength in warrior pose through those powerful legs, right? And then shooting some of that energy up through the fingertips, right? Even here, right? Chin kind of wants to look up. Can you move the chin under the crown of the head, right? Feeling that long, strong spine as the foundation for alignment. Right, from there, look up, watch the palms press together, and then open into warrior two. Right, a really nice point to gaze at, right, drishti, is that right middle finger. Right, gazing at that right fingernail, that middle fingernail, and maybe even blurring everything out away from that right middle finger. From there, reaching forward, flip the palm. With your gaze, follow that left hand up into Peaceful Warrior. Right, another option is to look down towards that left heel, right, but reach up and follow that right hand towards the sky. Take one more big breath in, and then on your exhale, slowly windmill the hands down to the earth. Step or float that right foot back. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, big upward facing dog. 
Exhale, downward facing dog. Awesome, inhale, left leg to the sky. And then step into warrior one here on the opposite side. All right, so first opportunity here on the left side. All right, to kind of bring your awareness to the soles of the feet. All right, to lift up all 10 toes and then to draw or maybe even visualize energy coming up through the soles of the feet and eventually radiating through the crown of the head and the fingertips. Breathe. Look up in between the palms, open into warrior two. And maybe gazing at that one still point of your left middle finger nail, blurring everything out. Right, using that one pointed focus to still the body, right, to come back to that observation of breath, and then to reach forward, flip the palm, and find peaceful warrior. Right, and then slow through those transitions. Right, no need to hurry and sort of rush into a pose. Right, keep that deep bend into the left thigh as you take one more big breath in. And then on your exhale, wing the other hands down to the earth. Step or float that left foot back. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, big old up dog. Exhale, big old downward facing dog. Awesome. And then from here, inhale high onto the balls of the feet. Bend your knees, step or float. Find a halfway lift at the top of your mat. And then on your exhale, forward fold. From there, toe to your feet, uh, hips width distance, right? Two fists is another great measurement of your hips, right? And then big toes, grab peace fingers. Once you firmly secure a grip around those big toes, right? Bouncy bend in the knees, right? And then from that bouncy bend, right? Bend your knees so much that your belly rests on your thighs and then gaze towards that front edge of your mat, right? And then keep that long length in your spine and think about your arms, right? Use your arms to pull the crown of your head down. And almost think about your legs like accessories. Right? So your legs aren't extending up. It's more that your arms are pulling down and your legs are just moving into that space your arms are creating. Breathe into this fingers to toes forward fold. Moving the elbows towards the front of the mat, and then long through the neck. Keeping the eyes and the lips gently closed as you send those strong, confident breaths deep down into the belly. For three, two, one. Very nice. Release the big toes, hands into the mat. Toe heel the big toes back together with that small gap between the heels. And then once more, the arms go heavy. And then we'll slowly roll ourselves up. Drawing the shoulder blades back. Reaching up and finding Tadasana. Press the palms together overhead. Right from there, find a gentle back bend as you inhale. And then exhale, forward fold. Step your right leg back into a long runner twist. Awesome, and then from this runner's lunge, shift weight into your left foot, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna press into our standing needle. All right, so notice that the left toes, right, my five left toes, are lifting off the mat. See if you can't do that first, just to root down through the four corners of your feet, right, or your sole of your foot, and then gently allow the left toes, all right, to just kind of become like kickstands for balance, all right, not relying on them too much. And then from here, hands can press under the shoulders and maybe you come up onto the ball of that left foot and start to play around with what a handstand or a handstand hop would feel like. Maybe with your hands, you grab your calf or your ankle and you begin to pull your forehead towards your left shin, right? Maybe, I like, left forearm behind the left calf, little kickstand of the right fingertips under the shoulder, right? And then allow for the forehead and the shin to connect with every exhale. Breathing down that big, powerful stretch of the left hip. And here we are for five, four, three, two, one. Back into your halfway lifted standing needle. So hands under shoulders. And then from here, take a big inhale, get that right heel higher. And then on your exhale, right toes lower down to tap the left heel. And then slowly inhale, right heel back to the sky. Awesome, slowly exhale, lower the toes down to tap. Slowly inhale, raise the heels back high. Last one, slowly lower down to tap. 
Inhale back to the sky and then back into your runner's lunge. Huge inhale. This time really set your gaze towards your brows. And then from there, step back downward facing dog. Roll yourself into a high plank pose. Lower down your knees, chest, and chin. On your inhale, find cobra. And then on your exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg to the sky. And then step it into a long runner's lunge. Very nice. Beautiful. And then from this runner's lunge, right, we're going to move your right hand a palm's distance closer towards the front edge of your mat. Right? And then what we're going to do here, we're not going to fling into it. We're going to slowly transition into Ardha Chandrasana, shifting weight into your half moon pose right, as you root down through the four corners of that right foot, looking up towards that lifted thumb if you can maintain your balance. Right? Or maybe staying more grounded by looking down towards the mat. Yeah, but one or the other, having the courage, right, maybe to float your hand to your heart, to play with a little bit of balance, even if, even if it means you fall out of the pose like I just did. All right, coming back into it, knowing that you got a little bit more data from falling out, right? You kind of know your edge now. Breathing deep into your Ardha Chandrasana of choice. Breathing for another three. Two. One, back into your standing needle, right? Listen carefully, big breath in. And then pinky toe meets pinky toe, top of your mat, right? With pinky toe meeting pinky toe, we'll dig into the side body a little bit more. We'll walk the hands towards the right, right? And then allow your gaze to go in and up towards the left armpit. And then think about pushing that left rib cage towards the front of the mat. I think about really compressing that right rib cage, expanding that left rib cage, breathing for three, two, one. Slowly bring those hands back towards front edge. Big toe meets big toe. Awesome. From there, right, soft bend in the knees, arms reach out in front of you, biceps stay by the ears, palms pressed together overhead. Maintaining that alignment, rise up, find your back bend. Very nice. Hands lower down to heart center. Awesome. Inhale, reach up, back bend. And then exhale, forward fold. Step your left leg back into a long runner's lunge. Awesome. All right, so find runner's lunge for a breath. And then begin to shift weight right into that right foot as we find standing needle here with the right foot down. All right, so you were just in Ardha Chandrasana here on the right foot. Now we're maintaining standing needle. Whether you stay in that half-lifted version and work on some handstand or handstand hops, right? Or you take a balance variation. It's up to you, right? Balance is, you know, we're allowing that right foot to kind of find its wobble and weevil. Right? And then choosing that one still point to focus on, breathing into it, keeping that left hand under the shoulder for a little kickstand if you'd like. But by all means, if you're looking to really challenge it, Bring that left hand to the right ankle or calf as well. And keep that right hip dialed back in space, right? Mine's sneaking forward. All right, so stay honest with the hips here and standing needle for three, two. Back into your half lifted version. Very nice. Inhale, left heel high. Exhale, lower down. Tap the left toes to the right heel. Right, and then slowly bring it right back up. Very nice, slowly exhale, lower down, tap. Slow inhale, back to the sky. Last one, slowly inhale, lower down, tap. Inhale, back to the sky. Back into your runner's lunge, big inhale, let's set the gaze high this time. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Awesome, from there we'll roll ourselves into a high plank pose. Lower down knees, chest and chin. On the inhale, we'll find that big, strong cobra. And on the exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg to the step. And then step into a long runner's lunge. Very nice, noticing how the mind might be trying to get ahead of itself, right? It knows Ardha Chandrasana is coming, right? But for right now, can we just pay attention to this runner's lunge? Can we come back to the breath, right? And the intention you said earlier, right? And then from that foundation, touching base, Right, we'll move the left hand a little bit further forward and then slowly open up the chest and hips simultaneously as you find half moon. All right, so half moon trying to stack that right shoulder 
right on top of the left shoulder. Very nice, yeah. Mindful that you're not locking out that left knee. All right, and then maybe you're floating that hand to your heart. All right, my balance is a little different today, right? So honor where I'm at, and then just kind of reassess and do my best from there. All right, so breathing deep. All right, best Ardachandrasana you can maintain with that breath we found pro to start practice for three. Two, and one, slowly finding half moon, or sorry, standing needle from your half moon, and then cross pinky toe to meet pinky toe. Very nice, and then from there, right, pinky toe meets pinky toe, we'll walk this cross-legged forward fold into a side body focused variation, opening up that right side of the body, right, and you have space in between each individual rib. Right, it's called intercostal space. And we're trying to really open up that intercostal space in the right side of the body here. Right, compressing the left lung to open up that right lung. Three for three. Two. One. Slowly bring the hands back towards front edge. Big toe meets big toe. Awesome. From there with a bouncy bend in your knees, slowly rise yourself up. Drawing the shoulder blades back, inhale, reach the arms up, press the palms together overhead, lower hands down the heart center. All right, take a moment to really push the heart into the thumbs and the thumbs back into the heart. And then from there, bend the knees. Awesome. Notice that the knees are in line right now, right? Keep the knees in line and parallel with one another as you take that prayer twist towards the right. All right, so you may have noticed that I, draw, I drew my left knee back in space to kind of handicap for that natural movement of the left knee, you don't want to sneak in front of the right knee here. All right, so drawing weight back into the left heel and then shifting weight forward into the right ball of the foot. All right, keep the knees in line and then twist right from those square hips. Looking over your right shoulder, breathing here for five, four, three, two, one, back to Utkatasana, maintain that bend in the knees, open up the arms just for an inhale, and then exhale, lower the hands back down to heart center, elbows out wide. All right, this time I'm gonna draw my right knee back in space, just to kind of handicap for that movement, All right, allowing my hips to stay square, my knees to remain parallel, and then to push my heart into the thumbs, and the thumbs into the heart here, in my twist. All right, so you find the back bend, you find the up dog in your spine in this forward, fold, forward folded twist. For another four, three, two, one. Release into your forward fold. Awesome. Slowly toe heel the feet back to hips width distance apart. Right from there, we'll stand onto our hands and find Padakastasana. So gorilla pose. A little deeper forward fold in the fingers to toes variation, but a similar setup. So bend the knees a lot, allow the belly to rest on the thighs, feel the crown of the head, right? Move out of the, out of the spine or out of the neck. And then pull with the arms, legs of the accessory there. Breathing into your gorilla pose. Almost think about like you're pinching and holding a pencil in between your shoulder blades here. Right, with every exhale, feeling the belly move towards the spine. With every inhale, feeling the belly press firmly against the thighs. Here we are for another six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Slowly release that fingers to toes forward fold. Hands into the mat. Fan the fingers out. Right, find that strong foundation of all ten fingertips, then the base of the knuckle, then the base of the fingers, then the heel of the palm. Right, so like there's a basketball under your hands. Right, from that Hastabandha connection will come into Bakasana or Crow Pose. So high onto the balls of the feet, knees shift towards the back of the arms, right, triceps up into the armpits maybe. And then maybe you start to bend the knees or bend the elbows, creating a little shelf. Right, drawing the heels up towards the glutes. All right, finding the arm balance here. And yeah, really shift some weight into the fingertips. 
I try not to just collapse all the weight into the heel of the paw. All right, awesome. Holding your bakasana. Right. Hugging the inner thighs in. And maybe your fingertips or your toe tips are on the mat and you're just shifting kind of halfway into it. Right, you're still in bakasana. All right, you don't need to come into the full arm balance to be practicing the pose. For three, two, Step or float through, take that vinyasa, right, out of your bakasana into your chaturanga, from your chaturanga into your upward facing dog, from your upward facing dog into your downward facing dog. Very nice. Take a huge breath in and a big breath out. Awesome. From there, inhale, right leg high to the sky. Bend the knee, open the hip, second opportunity here in this twisted dog, or flip your dog from your twisted dog. Rolling to the outside edge of that left foot, bringing that left heel and the left heel to be in line, right? So heel of the palm, heel of the foot, and then from there I like to kind of bend the knees and then really think about that expressive reaching up and then reaching over. Alright, awesome. Left elbow, move towards the back of the mat, right? Rolling the bicep towards the front of the mat and then open up the heart here. Alright, breathing for another four. Three, two, one. Slowly unflip that dog, left heel back high to the sky, and then step it into a lizard lunge from here, right foot steps forward. All right, might wanna walk those left toes a little further back. All right, great modification here, if you need it, is to lower that left knee down. If you're wondering, I don't know if I need it, right? Listen to your breath, it definitely has the answer for you. If your breath is, right it's super labor chances are you need the modification right if the breath is like really easy right you're uh, maintaining it with little effort at all and the brain is wandering around chances are you might need to intensify so if you need to intensify lower down onto your forearms right then think about the sphinx right dragging the heart forward and maintaining the length through the four sides of the neck not looking too far forward and not looking too far back Right, if you're on your forearm balance and you're like, man, this is also very um, simple for me, right? Fine. Come back onto your palms and then take your right uh, tricep, wrap it behind your hamstring, and then allow the bind of your fingers, right, to kind of find that lower back area. And if you want to look, work on another arm balance, popular one that you all like to try is hands under the shoulders, ball high onto the ball of the right foot. All right, create that shelf with the bent elbow and then shift forward. Right from there. All right, but I prefer hanging out on the forearms. All right, breathe in deep into the right hip here. A few more breaths. And then slowly back onto your palms if you've lowered down onto your forearms. Right? And then we'll walk it into a wide-legged forward fold. Right? From your wide-legged forward fold, find a halfway lift. Hands on the shoulders, tuck the pelvis forward. And then from here, we'll find skandasana or find a surfer squat. So slowly begin to bend your left knee, allowing the right toes right, to start to point up towards the ceiling or sky. Right? And then sit into the hips. You might need your hands on the mat. You might be able to bring your hands to heart center. Right? Or maybe you want to take the garland bind, reaching up and binding behind that lower back as you look over the right shoulder. All right, but keep those right toes flexed. Awesome. Right in that surfer squat visualization, is like you're like in a big uh, barrel, right? A big wave barrel, right? Kind of charging forward. So, kind of fun pose to visualize here. Breathing for three, two, Press back into your wide-legged forward fold, hands under the shoulders. Walk yourself into a runner's lunge from that lizard lunge. Inhale, look forward, and then step back. Three-legged down dog, right leg shakes out. Awesome. From there, inhale, left leg to the sky. Knee bends, hip opens. Right, opportunity to stay here, twisted in the dog, breathing into the back of that right leg, or right, flip the dog up and over. Right, and then again, I like to kind of almost tap the hips down and then reach the hips up as though a rope was attached to my pelvis and it was being cinched up towards the ceiling. 
right? Bring some awareness to the right arm. We're not locking it out, right? There's that soft bend that allows for that energy to continue to flow through an open system, right? Not creating any dams of energy. All right, awesome. Breathe for three, two. Slowly begin to unflip that dog, right? And then take that big wide step into your lizard lunge. Left foot forward, hands down. Breathe. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, as always, right? If you kind of feel like you're taking the practice super seriously, all right, like make a funny noise, a funny face, let go of that serious approach and shift towards that like sincere approach. All right, you're here to be in the body and breathe. I guarantee you it's not that serious. All right, from there, if you want to lower down onto your forearms, fine. If you want to take the bind and the arm balance, all right, chances are you know where to go. Think about your right inner thigh here though. It kind of wants to collapse. Can you lift from the hips right, to really have that strong integral opening of the whole left hip? A few more breaths. All right, neck stays long. Don't let the chin collapse too much. And then bring the hands back under the shoulders, right? Re-extend through the right leg if you lower the right knee down, and then we'll turn the toes towards the right side of the mat, finding your wide-legged forward fold. All right, from there, hands drive under the shoulders, and then begin to bend the right knee, right? Feeling how that left toe kind of naturally wants to open up towards the ceiling. And you might need to walk the heels further in or further apart, depending on how you're built. Awesome. Right, and then hands can come to your heart, trying to stack shoulders over hips. You can keep your hands onto the mat, or you can wrap that right tricep in front of the right shin, keeping the right rib cage and inner thigh together, reaching up away from there. All right, hanging out there, maybe for months, years in your practice. All right, or eventually, maybe you want to bind, but continue to use your gaze, use that perspective of looking over the shoulder to find more rotation from the whole spine. Not here for long, just another three, two, one. Slowly come back into that wide-legged forward fold. From there, walk it back into a runner's lunge. From there, inhale left leg to the sky and shake and wiggle that left leg out. Beautiful. All right, so from here, big toes touch. We'll roll it into a high plank pose. We'll once more lower down knees, chest and chin. We'll inhale into a big strong cobra. Nice, and then we'll exhale into a child's pose with the knees out wide. Few breaths in child's pose. All right, taking this moment of pause to again, just stop and observe. To observe whatever is in your experience on the mat. Right, and then just from that foundation, not doing anything with it, just purely being with it, can you shift the attention to the breath? Just observe in that natural rise and fall of the body as you note any sensations that show up. And then from here, slowly begin to walk your hands back towards your hips. Right, and then what we'll do is we'll draw the knees, hips width distance apart. And then most of you see where we're going, right? Ustrasana or camel, or some of you see where we're going, right? Hands come to the low back, right? Pinch the shoulder blades together behind you. Point the elbows like they're trying to point towards your heels, right? Not away from you. And then from there, push the heart high. Reach back, look back, go back, right? And if that's very easy, the breath is maintained, right? Then maybe reach back and grab your heels. But if reaching back and grab your heels, takes you out of your breath, takes you out of your intention. All right, shift back and modify. All right, peak heart opener here, right? So really almost think about like a Care Bear, right? It's like pushing the belly forward, cracking the heart open towards the ceiling or sky for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly releasing the pose, right? Coming out of that Care Bear. Moving back into your tabletop pose. Right, drop the belly, look up, find cow. Exhale, press, arching around it into cat. Tuck the toes under from your cat. 
turn it into a downward facing dog. Right from there, inhale, right leg to the sky. Bend the knee, open the hip. Bring your right knee to your left elbow. Little brief fall in triangles as you, as you extend the right leg. Reach up towards the sky, take a big breath in. And then left hand back down, half pigeon from here, bringing the right knee to the right wrist. Pressing down through the right shin as you point the left toe straight back. Right, the left toes kind of want to almost look like a banana here, or the left foot does. All right, point the left toe straight back, right? No, banana foot. All right, from there, big inhale. And then slowly just crawl the arms forward, seeing if you can't tap the forehead down, right, as that last portion of your body to arrive into your forward foot. Breathe. Not too long in this half pigeon, right? And in half pigeon, it's a difficult pose to maintain because it's uncomfortable and it's still. Right? And like many of our circumstances right now in life, there's a lot of stillness, there's a lot of discomfort. Right? So can you practice your relationship to that experience here by focusing on your breath and creating more of that specific quality of the intention you said earlier, right? And whatever that means, be creative with that. Slowly begin to walk the hands back towards the hips, hands under the shoulders, tuck the left toes under, right? And then inhale, right leg to the sky, shape or wiggle that out. Inhale, left leg to the sky. And then bring left knee to right elbow. Brief little fallen triangle, right? To really open up the body, right? Strong triad connection with the two feet and the left hand. And then right hand back down towards the, seat, uh, towards the mat. Bring your left knee to your left wrist. Point the right toe straight back. Very nice, right? Heart high, hips square. Awesome. And then. Spider crawl it forward with the fingertips. Three. All right, just another opportunity here in stillness and in discomfort, right, to shift towards breath, intention. All right, maybe one of the four C's, right? Curiosity, connection, compassion, right? Breathe just for another three rounds of breath here. I think I missed a C, right? Creativity would be the fourth C. <laughs> Sitting here like, I think I missed a C. Yeah, all that means is right, like being creative with the story that you're telling yourself in these poses. Maybe it's not true. Right, maybe you can tell yourself something more supportive or powerful. Slowly begin to walk the hands up towards the hips. Roll to the left hip, and we'll swing both legs forward. Awesome. All right, so from there, or from here, setting up for Dandasana. Right, giving your legs a little bit of like a, a drum roll. Awesome. And then moving the glutes away from one another, internally rotating the thighs. 
lifting the heels up and off the mat. Inhale, reaching the arms up. Right, and then quick little Paschimottanasana as you forward fold. Inhale to a halfway lift. And then exhale, refold. Right, and if you need a towel or a strap here, right, and you're uh, much more high up than I am, you're still just in Pashi, you're in Paschimottanasana, just like I am, right? Doesn't matter how it looks, matter how it feels. Deep stretch down that posterior chain of the body, seated for three, two, one. Slowly walk the hands back up the shins, and then we'll take a seated um, twist today. We haven't done that in um, sort of a few weeks since we've been doing these online flows. All right, so right, bend that left knee, allow that left heel to travel to the outside of the right glute, and then the right sole of your foot to the outside of your left thigh. Awesome. And then from here, both hips stay square. The entire right foot stays rooted into the earth. Take your left elbow crease, wrap it around your right shin, interlace your fingers, right? And then like an accordion, right? Push the heart into the palms, the palms into the heart, right? Maybe you wanna do a few little pumps like that just to feel what that's like, right? And then look over that right shoulder. All right, if you can maintain that, I recommend reaching that left arm high and then moving that left elbow to the outside of the right thigh creating a bit more rotation, but still keeping all four corners of that right foot into the earth. Heart stays high. All right, look over that right shoulder. And then gently a little counter twist as you release. Right elbow to the inside of that knee. Push the heart in the opposite direction. Awesome, from there, hands behind the hips. You kind of open up the legs and then just switch it around. Beautiful, left foot to the outside of the right thigh, right knee bends, heart comes high, right? Hips stay rooted. And then from there, right elbow crease in front of left shin, interlace the fingers, right? Kind of push a few times into the heart, right? And then really hold that deep twist as you look over the left shoulder, right? If that's manageable, right? And you want to intensify it, allow that right arm to reach up and then create a bit more rotation Right, but still breathe deep down into the belly. And our twist, the breath wants to get trapped in the upper lungs, right? but push that diaphragm down into the belly through that resistance in the twist and strengthen that muscle of respiration. Right, it's super important. Really awesome muscle to strengthen the diaphragm. Gentle counter twist, left elbow inside of that knee push the heart to the opposite side. Awesome, from there, extend both legs out. All right, you give legs a little flutter. Scoop the uh, pelvis towards the heels, grab the front of the shins, and just rock and roll a few times. All right, some of you like to rock back and hold plow or deaf man's pose. All right, but listen to your intuition. Give yourself what you need, eventually settling onto your back and finding happy baby pose. No rush, right, if you got more time, Want to throw something else in there? Go for it. If not, happy baby with me. Knees to the outsides of the ribs, pulling down as you kick the heels up. Breathing here just for a five count. Taking one more big breath in, and then eventually allowing yourself to find a final resting pose. All right, so for me, currently, I've been really liking Supta Baddha Konasana to end my practice. But if you're taking a classic uh, Shavasana, arms and legs are out wide, right? And the body really just surrenders like a corpse. Supta Baddha, soles of the feet together. I like one hand on my heart, one hand on my belly. Some of you like to grab opposite elbows above your head. All right, but choose a pose that you can commit to stillness within. Getting all those fixes and fidgets out of the way. Right, and then like visualizing a snow globe. Right, and throughout our day, throughout our practice, we're moving around, we're doing so much, we're shaking up that snow globe. Right, so here in stillness, can you visualize that snow globe being set on a shelf? Seeing all of that snow and energy settle to the body, the back of the body or the bottom of that snow globe. Right, and then once it's finally settled, now you get a true, clear picture of what's going on inside. 
right? And so you don't need to manage your breath or thoughts. All you need to do, is do all you can do if you'd like is just observe what's showing up in stillness here. Being with it fully, right? And feeling it fully. Nothing else to do. I'll be silent and be present. have more time and you'd like to commit to this stillness, this observation, this mindful rest, give yourself that. All right, but for the sake of the hour that we have together, let's start to gently reanimate the body, deepening the breath, All right, allowing your body to find fetal pose as you draw your knees into your chest, rocking to your right or left side. And then taking a moment once you roll to your side, and just to bring that attention to where you're connected to the mat. And to feel the gravity that surrounds you, to identify the boundaries of your body, to feel the clothes on your skin, the taste in your mouth, the smell in your nose. Right? And then from that feeling of being grounded, slowly pressing yourself up, into a cross-legged seated position at the top of your mat. And see if you can't remain closed with the eyes or just softly open, about eight inches in front of you if you like to keep your eyes open. All right, and then I like one hand on my heart, one hand on my belly, but your hands can rest wherever they want. One hand on my heart, one hand on top of that. All right, and yeah, take a moment to bring a smile to your face. Take a moment with the chin under the crown of the head to feel that length in your spine, that open feeling in your hips and heart and to know that you earned this feeling you cultivated it over breath and showing up and stretching and struggling there's no pill for that All right, you earned it All right, so from that place of self-worth earning this experience you're sitting in thumbs rise to forehead center forever grateful for the practice the community and every individual all right, who's practiced with us and who might do this later. All right, from that place, we all have the opportunity to say, Namaste. Awesome. Um, so I'm gonna try and put this one up on YouTube. I finally got my computer back, so I'm gonna try and put it up on YouTube. Um, yeah, the goal is to do one of these a day. Um, and yeah, if you wanna mix it up with teachers, um, Orlando Power Yoga, which is the studio I work for, is doing three classes a day. Um, through at least the whole month of April um, and they're doing a special if you practice for 30 days and hashtag um, the studio um, you'll get $30 off your package so that's something cool Kelly's doing um, and yeah shelter in shelter on pleasure practicing with y'all um, and we'll get through this together take it easy